folks. In today's video, we are going to be showing you how to process a hog. Uh, it'll be from start to finish. Now, we will not be showing the dispatch, but warning right now, there will be a dead animal in it and you will see blood. So if this is not your cup of tea, might want to just go ahead and stop watching right now and come back to some of our other videos. But trust me, this here is good knowledge and the way times are getting, it's something good to know how to do. And in this video, what we'll do in the description, we'll fix at what time period it is, the different parts, where if you wanna speed up to see whatever part, to watch it there, just go to that spot. Alrighty folks, let's get started. As you can see here folks, these are two happy, healthy hogs. Great shape. <coughs> but you just want to make sure it has a place to isolate. You know? So that's why we got this lane. We'll put them out in here. And something, if they get out here, they're just in here. Yep. Okay, folks, now this here is Jason Scalding Vat. He's running some water in there. Now, this is the evening before. He's going to get some water and some heat in there where it's going to be so cold. It won't be so hard in the morning to get it heated up. And he's going to let us know some of the stuff that we need to have. This is a hook that I had the welding man make me, Mike Grosher. And uh, it's uh, good to put in their mouth to be able to drag the hog. There's a place in their chin there where you can hook them and you'll see it tomorrow and everything. Need you a good piece of link of chain and stuff. This is a self leveling that you can get from Cabela's. And that's what I lift all my hogs with. You can split it and it'll self level. When you pick one side off, it don't drop no more than four inches. Right there is some of the equipment that we'll use. And you can see that right on the right, that's a sticking knife. That's a knife you're going to use to stick the hog with, and you need a good sharp knife and a, a stiff blade. And then wooden handle ones, that's a bell scrapers. I got them from Lehman's in the Amish store, and they're handy. And you see them old knives, them old hickory knives, and some homemade knives. And I got a box to put everything in, and uh, got a good sharpening steel there, and just something to keep up with everything. You see a sawzall, and that comes in very handy. You can use a saw, but a sawzall comes in a lot handier. And that splitter right there is one of my best investments. And it's good to have some clean tubs like that to put the liver in and the tenderloin, and just comes in handy. There, where we're gonna be at tomorrow. We've had snow and stuff, so we're cleaning it up, put new water in your bath. We're just killing two hogs, so we'll try to just level it up there about maybe a foot, two foot of water just in between there. Don't need much, just so it'll get one side of the hog. You lead the way. They try to get some dry wood. That's the best thing to keep the water good and hot, and then some good wood that we burn at the house. Put it far under. I usually do it in the mornings, but it's supposed to be nine degrees in the morning, so I thought I'd go ahead and put one under this evening with this water. That way I'll have coals in the morning. Like I said, just going to have coals in the morning, nine degree weather, we kind of like to have a little help in the morning when we get it going.
there's wove bar. We use wove bar. We'll put it over in the scald and you'll see tomorrow kind of how it works. Old man Jake Rourke told me about the wove bar and I've kind of done it ever since. It made a lot of sense when he told me. Well, that's a lot better. I I've, I've, ain't even tried it yet. And I already know that there's going to be better than what we... <laughs> These hooks here is for the chains and Doug, they'd talk about losing chains and my grandpa did too. They hook them hooks on it and then they'd pull the chain to pull it out of there. But this wove bar is a whole lot better and you'll see that tomorrow. We've been a killing in this same spot working up hogs for probably about 16, 17 years. And this will be the last year we'll kind of set up here. Next year we're going to move closer to the cooler. So it's kind of bittersweet. Folks, this here is inside Jason's cooler he made. It's a cool room. He'll explain more about it in just a second. built this five years ago and uh, consulted with the cool bot people when I done it they're excellent people you tell them kind of what you're wanting to do and they'll work right with you got the rails from out at work and uh, some of my hooks is what used to run machines out there called TRTs and, uh, it's just an oversized air conditioner and the cool bot kind of lies to it manipulates it pretty commonplace now but when I was messing with it it's kind of something new to me yeah got rocks of insulation in the walls two by six walls and then put this uh, blue board up try to keep a thermometer at the back and I can kind of see where it is back here versus up there too and it, it's always about about right it's done it, we done a very good job on it and with the hog we just uh, just got to get the heat out of it so we'll put these in here Saturday and then Lord willing we'll work them up uh, Tuesday evening when we get off work and I believe Doug's going to get to come up and we'll kind of get to see that too alrighty here's Jason 4.30 in the morning he took these pictures he's going up there to get the fire started you can see the snow on the ground it's cold You can see the steam coming up off that water, folks. Now what we're doing right here is we're checking the temperature to see what it is. I believe it's 152, but what we're doing is just checking. We want it to be closed before we go to get the hogs. We pulled up.
down there. We're climbing in, just taking our time. And we're going to open the gate, and we're going to attempt to get one hog out to try to isolate it by itself. Now we got her out there and we're just setting our pallet up and getting ready and what we've got is a 22 long rifle. I've got a little old pump action I got off of an old man years ago and you just take your time. She's walking back and forth trying to figure out what's going on now. Uh, I usually, I don't feed them the day before so you could have probably tossed a little feed down and that would help in this process but you're just going to want to take your time. You want to make sure and make a good shot, just wait, just let her settle down. This might take a little bit, but just take your time, don't rush nothing. Now this is out of a book that I've got, and it's at the end of it, you'll see which book it is, but uh, it shows ear to eye and just shoot a little bit off center and that's what you want to do You're shooting that's a little bit bigger than a golf ball and that'll stun him. That'll put him down Now this right here is the actual sticking of the hog and the bleeding out and uh, this is a it's kind of a hard process to do but you can do it just uh, Quickly as the hog is stunned someone steps in to hold the feet and you're going to stick your sticking knife in right under the breastbone pointed toward the tail of the animal as even as you can with the hog and just press in there and then just make a kind of a push downward use the breastbone as a fulcrum and that's going to make the uh, cut the arteries right there going up toward the neck and you'll see right here that we hit it the blood comes out just a real quick process I ain't got no one holding it for me but I've done it for years I've kind of learned how to stick them but I recommend for you to have somebody hold his front legs, put it on his back, and you can push in there real even like. And that bleeding is real important, so make sure you get a good, a good stick. over here side now what you want to do right here you're going to get that hook and you want to hook it right in the lower part of his jaw there's a little V on the chin goes up under a hog under his tongue. If you can get that in there, it'll bring it right off there. Now John here is gonna hook it first. He's gonna have it just by the edge of the mouth. And it's gonna come loose. Now when he reaches back down here, he gets it in that jaw. Now if you don't get it in that jaw, you can pull him anywhere. And that's what he's got right there. Back up the hill, 
13 degrees, folks. Pretty chilly. Old enough to kill hogs. <laughs> <laughs> Most important thing is to get this water right. We'll take our time. We'll get exactly like we want, and you'll see why we go through all this. We get a good scald. It won't take us no time to scrape it. What we're doing here, we're checking that water. And I got a thermometer down in there and I'm checking the water. And it was too hot. It, I've learned over the years it's easier to cool it down than it is to heat it up. And uh, remember that. And uh, that's what we're doing right here. We take our time. We make sure we get that water right because it's a one time deal. Set the hair. 173 degrees set the height. 145 to 165, that's the range. The lower the temperature, the longer you got to keep it in. Okay. I'm sorry that might be a point. That'd been something. If that Earl had been here, you'd have got to heard about the building. <laughs> <laughs> I've been building it for 15 years. here is I'm going to hold up on the wire and they roll the hog in. I just try to keep it from splashing so bad. And once the hog is uh, in the scalder, you'll see us, we keep working that wove wire back and forth. You want to keep him working in that water up and down. Should 
that hot. What do you want? Just let him a little bit. Put him on his back. Yeah. I have to stop. Wow. Yeah, I'm not locked in joint. Hold this, Chris, and then put it on his back. What I'm doing right there is I'm slipping its back feet, its hams, and pulling off what I can because that'll cool off the quickest once it's pulled out of the scalder. I just want to work the water down toward his head. There we go. I think we can get him out of there. If he's on the get up far. Stand on the water. Now with this wove bar, what you're going to do is stand on top of the wove bar, and then the other side hands you it, and then on the count of three, all of you just pull the hog out together. As you can see, we get right on them with them bell scrapers, and I love them. Uh, they won't cut the skin. You're able to scrape it. It brings that skiffing off and just brings the hair right off. We got an awful good scald and them bell scrapers are working good. There is a good shot right there, folks, where you stick the pig to bleed it out. What do you think, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. Pull him toward us and flip him over. Yeah. 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 No, you ain't got no bucket, have you? Oh, a little bit. I will. Got a little bit right here on this. I reckon when you get it up, when you get that first. We'll try that knife. Put it against it. I yeah, I believe that's what we can get in. Now we've got a pretty good scrape on it. And we're going to pour a little bit of hot water on here and scrape a little more. But when you hang him up, you're going to put some scalded water on him, hung up, and scrape him one more time. And you'll get that higher down his back good. And then you're going to put cold water and do a final scrape down, and it's usually a good job. Kind of scraping on Now we're ready to lift the hog and we're going 
get the gambrel, and you want to ease back out of the hog, and you'll cut out what they call the hamstrings. And you'll see me, I get down here, and I'm going to make a cut right in the hoof of the animal, and I'm going to make about a three and a half inch cut down the side of the foot. As I cut, I'm just cutting out around the edge there. You'll start seeing me ease my knife on the edges. You're just trying to cut out the hamstrings, and that's what makes them stand up in the field, and that's what's able to hang them here on the gambler. And you just take your time and cut that. You'll see them exposed, and when I get it cut out, my finger will shoot behind it right there, and I go to the other one. And the same thing, you're just gonna cut right there in that hoof, right between the dew claws. Gonna make about a three and a half inch cut down. And then you're just gonna cut around the edge, exposing that hamstring, and then you'll push your finger through it, and then you can get the gambrel through it. said you get them up I get that little tenderloin and then my dad said the same thing and you'll see when I get them up that's the first thing I bring out that's something we do we always try to get some tenderloin up to the house and get some biscuits down hog hung you're going to throw some water out of the scalder throw it back on it and just kind of get it all over it and then we're going to scrape it with knives now not sharp knives but they're semi sharp but Now that we've scraped it again, we're going to throw cold water, and it's just the same thing. You're just going to try to go all the way around the carcass and get that cold water tossed up on it. 
and this will be the final scrape down and there'll be some hires that probably didn't come off but on that cold water bed added they'll just pop right off for you and this will be the final scrape and it usually does a fine job for you This is the bringing off of the hog's head. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your knife right behind his ears. And you're going to go straight through the head. And you're going to try to ease along the atlas bone. When you come around to the front here, right directly under the sticking point, you want to go straight down into the chin there. And what that's going to be is a handle for your hand. And just cut everything loose. Just take your time there and cut around. And just expose just the atlas bone. Now reach down and grab that where you cut down to its chin to get a hold of it. Have someone hold its feet and just twist. ready to gut it and I went over to the truck and I've got a couple of knives. And you need to have you one knife that you're just going to use to gut the animal with, a good sharp knife. I have a little Vitronox a knife that's a, it's a fillet knife and I sort of sharpen it up real good and that's what I use to cut into the entrails and stuff and you'll see here. Uh, the first cut I'm going to make is right in the center and that's a cutting into the H bone that's in divides the hands. Now, with it in this direction, the guts is down in the lower part of the chest cavity, so you ain't got to worry about cutting into them, cutting to them, that H bone. Now, I've cut all the way down the animal, just scored the skin, and when I got down here, I come back up the neck, and I just stop right at the breastbone. And uh, just cut through, make sure you got that cut good at that H bone. Uh, cut the tail off here, remove the tail. Then we'll go over and we'll get the sawzall. And like I said before, you a sawzall just comes in handy. You can use a saw, but you'll kind of see what I'm going to do right here. All right, now I'm going to come in here with the sawzall. And what I've got, so I've got stainless steel blades that I ordered, and that's what I use for these. And right here, I'm cutting through the H bone, and that's going to divide the hands and. Uh, you gotta remember the guts right there is down in the rib cage there, so you ain't gotta worry about hitting them. Just cut straight through that H bone and then go down to the bottom, have somebody hold its feet, and you just catch the tip of that breast bone and cut up through there. And just take your time, you'll see me stop and feel, and that's what you need to do, just feel, cause right there at the heart, you don't wanna hit none of that inner and stuff. And once you get through it, you're good. Now I'm gonna come back over here and I've got a, a knife that I'm gonna cut the bung out with. And I just take my time. And I will just tell you, don't uh, we're placing the gut tub under it. And <clears throat> uh, just take your time when you're bringing out this bung. You don't want to uh, hit nothing. Don't cut nowhere you can't see. That's what I kind of advise. And you'll see what I do. I cut that cut where I cut the H bone. I make a little V. Make a little V right there around its back parts. And then with that V, I'll lift up and I'll cut right at the backbone. You'll, you'll see me here, you're just looking and don't cut nowhere you can't see because you don't want to hit nothing there. You'll just
just kind of breaking this loose. It's just held together by the fibers there, and they're just cutting them and exposing it more and more. Now right here, I pick it up. When I lift up, I'm gonna cut right at the back of the backbone, and that's gonna break it loose. And that's gonna fix it to where I can uh, pull it through the H-bone that I just cut with the sawzall. And then we'll have Dan tied off. Now right here I've pulled the, the bung out and I've pulled the, out to the front. I've got Dan tying it off. Now this is just so it don't uh, work up no manure or nothing, you know, uh, while you're trying to get it. You'll see how quick this gut process goes, but when you're first starting, sometimes it's a slow process. You're kind of slow and you just want to give yourself all the time. So you don't want no accidents. So it's better to be proactive there. Tie that off and you won't have to worry about it. Now. Uh, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna get me a knife and it's a paring knife. It's just a knife to pair with. And I use this knife, I, I get my beefs, my hogs, everything with this. And I'm able to place it in my hand and push my fist into the, the cavity there and just press down. As you can see, that's all I'm doing. That's a paring knife. That, it's a Victor Knox paring knife. And I just put my hand, my hand is between the chest cavity, the stomach cavity and the guts and the knife just cuts straight down through that. And that's kind of a very handy knife for me. Now as you're getting, everything will come pretty good. You'll see the livers come out and the spleen and the lungs. But when you get down right here in this breast uh, bone area, it's going to get real tight. So you'll want to turn your knife to always be on the outside of the carcass. You can see kind of how I'm cutting. You're just trying to cut the little strands there that's holding that together. And always cut away. Don't cut in to them guts. And then just work it down into its neck and you're just going to skin its esophagus right out of there. Now this part right here is going back to what my uncle and my dad said. They wanted them inner loins brought out as soon as they could. And as you can see, there's steam coming out of the hog and I'm cutting them inner loins out. And the way them little loins are gonna come out, you'll cut right along the, the backbone and you'll just kind of ease down there and you can kind of see it. You can get a hold of it with your hand and it'll go up there right next to the hand and you just kind of work it off there. Just skin as close as you can to the bone and you'll have your little loin come off. And we ended up sending both of them up there to have us some biscuits and a fresh tin of loin. And I recommend that, that'll make a, a good day out of it.
Oh, now you kind of see I'm bringing my knife down its back. I'm cutting right down the backbone, splitting it. Now this is more feasible for when you lay them on the table. And we're going to split it, but you can see that I went right down its back. Now we got the carcass washed out good and it's drained. Now we're laying the splitter in there and you just start at the top, right there where its tail's at. Start cutting and just, just apply gentle pressure and it cuts right down through them vertebrae. And like I said, I've cut them with a, a Sawzall 4 and a large blade, but this splitter is worth every bit of money I paid for it. It splits my beefs, it splits my hogs, and it just does a number one job. Oh, now we got it split and everything, and this was the hog that's going to go to the cooler. And uh, we've got it cut in half, so I'm just going to leave it in halves. And my cousin, he comes up here, and when he goes to car, it's going to see him. He's going to grab around the rib cage and put his shoulder there where the ham will fall over on his shoulder. And you can carry a side of pork there pretty easy by yourself, and you'll kind of see what John does here. And you'll see how the self-leveling uh Gambrel does right here. It won't drop it hardly none here once we take that off and that's kind of a good thing. Oh, kind of show how this done. See this didn't go nowhere. Oh, oh. Levels. You said you want that at Cabela's. Cabela's. Big yeah. game hanger. I believe that's what they call it. He'll like that other one on the top though. Oh you, John. Yeah. Alright. Now you go and put the tanner rolls on here with this on that other. We got to put the pork chops out there. Right here's my paring knife, and you'll see I'm just taking it on this sharpening steel, just making smooth motions up and down it. And right there's the tenderloin biscuits. You can see in the background, that's what my uncle and my dad wanted, and I reckon Dan, he enjoyed them. Now we're uh, gutting this and again, and same thing as the last, just make a cut into the H-bones, 
then score the skin all the way down to the bottom. Try to find where you stuck the hole got right under the breastbone and just cut all that out good and smooth. And then come back up the breastbone. You're going to cut all that out right there, just opening it up. And then you'll come back up the breastbone, just score it one more time up through there. And then we'll go get the saws off. Once again, we're going to gut it, and we're going to set the gut tub under it. Be good to have some big old tubs like that. And once again, I'm going to make a little V back there to its bung. You can see kind of how I do, just a V, and cut all the way back out of that bung. And don't cut where you can't see. Just take your time and cut around it, and just cut it loose from the backbone. And you're going to pull it through that H bone. Just take your time. Now once again, we, we cut the bung loose and we pulled it through the H-bone and waiting on Dan to bring us a string. He got to eating them tenderloin biscuits and we just couldn't get much out of him after that. <laughs> but uh, just tie this off. Like I said, uh, this is just uh, being proactive. You don't want nothing to work up out of it, uh, manure or anything while you're getting it. And just uh, try to be proactive, tie it off.
Now, once again, I'm just uh, wanting to remind you, when you get down there close to that breastbone, it's going to get real tight on your hands. Make sure you cut toward the carcass. You're just trying to cut right there next to the breastplate. That's what's holding it. And just make sure all your cuts is toward the carcass. Don't cut toward the uh, guts. Now with this and it's my uncle's hog guy and the first thing we want to do is bring out them inner loins and uh, you can see I'm cutting right along the backbone all the way down scoring close to the ribs and you just cut it close to the bone and it just goes up there toward the uh, ham and you just cut across it there and that gives you the little loins on the inside and then next we'll work toward bringing out the leaf lord but first we'll bring them tenderloins out and set them down. Now we got the tenderloin out, we're going to pull the leaf lard out, and that's the fat that's uh, covering that cavity right there. It goes down into the side of the ribs. Uh, I believe Carolyn's going to make a little video of uh, making lard out of this leaf lard, and you'll get to see how that works. And With a warm carcass like this, it don't really pull out real good. We don't get it pulled real good, but with my carcass that was cold in the chiller, uh, it come out real well and uh, you'll see it in the next video But now you do the leaf lard and we'll do that on both sides and then we'll go with separating the hog up and cutting out our pork chops Oh, and now we've kind of got the leaf lard pulled out. I'm going to show where I make my cut for the ham. It's this first vertebrae. You see right there? That's where I'm going to separate the ham at. You can do it on the front, but it'll take away from your middling. And that gives you more of a sirloin. But I usually go right there with that one.
Now I'm gonna fix my cut here for preparing for my pork chops. So I'm gonna cut around with this hand, but I ain't gonna go through the bone yet. I just cut around just enough to get around the loin. Now I'll go down to the shoulder, and like any animal, there's 14 ribs on each side. I count up five ribs. I go between the fifth and sixth rib, and that's usually right there at the front of that sternum. You can see kind of where that hit, that's usually where it hits all the time. Sometimes it'll be a little higher, but usually it's a little lower. And just like the ham, if you wanted to go up to the sixth and seventh, you're just taking away from your midland, adding more to your shoulder. It's just your preference. This is the way I do it. I'm gonna try to bring my pork chop down with about a three inch cut on the inside. I'll skin behind here, I'll skin the skin back, exposing the loin. And as you skin, you'll see here, I cut from the shoulder, I open that up, and I just skin, you can see the loin bulged back there. And I'm just gonna skin and open it up, and then when I saw, I'll saw right up through there and uh, bring the whole pork chop out. And you'll see here in just a second. All right, once again, we got the saws all, and I want to remind you, I got them stainless steel blades, like I said in the first video. Just saw through the front of that sternum right there. Uh, probably would have used a knife there to cut on through that, but now you're going to cut all the way through the shoulder, have somebody holding it. And uh, right there is probably about 40 pounds dropping off in his arm, so just have somebody there strong, and John's as strong as anybody. And now I've got my. Uh, ribs are showing and I'll ease right up inside and if you'll see where I start my cut at it's about three inches over on the top of the ribs there and I'll just ease up and I'll go straight up where the little tenderloin come out and that'll be where my pork chops will come out at. The first cuts, just going through that first vertebrae, cutting through the loin, but not all the way. I'm just bringing out the tenderloin there, the pork chop. So I stopped right as soon as I got on the other side of that loin. Now we cut the pork chops out, now we're bringing the midland off, and I'll leave the ribs attached. My uncle's having me cure his midland for him, and uh, we'll take the ribs off whenever we go to do all that. So now just the hams are hanging, and uh, that's kind of the way to break down a, a hog right there. Uh, part of it was going to my uncle's basement, he was going to work it up the next day, but the midland was going up to my cooler. <laughs> Thank you. 
getting to the end of the hog kill and we got them hanging in the cooler and we're showing Doug our cooler and like I said earlier this is a cool bot and I've got an LG air conditioner in there and just an oversized air conditioner that's in there bringing that down try to run the meat between 36 and 40 degrees now with a hog uh, you just got to get the heat out of it we could have worked them up the next day but with a cooler there's no rush I ended up working them up on Tuesday evening and Dan and Doug come up and uh, we worked them up together so uh, he was able there'll be another video and you'll get to see how we chunk it up for sausage and uh, I will say with the, the cool bot building I wish I'd have put a, a drain in it uh, you see how I have plastic down in there that's to keep the floor clean and everything but right here's another video there's the middling and ribs still on it for my uncle and we're going to cure them and down on the bottom was the jaws and that was for my dad so he's going to try to do that and there's the pork chops that's cut out and right there's the jaws out of both of them and uh, there's the mine hanging and we're going to work them up in the whole hog sausage and like I said just got to get the heat out of them Now old Doug takes a picture of the mountains there, and that's the view from the house there. You can see all the way into North Carolina. And the little building you seen down there with the block, that's where my hog building's supposed to be. They've been working on it for 15 years. And there's another view from up there at the cooler. You can kind of see the bee yard. And right there's Laws Mountain. And that's uh, just the most beautiful country in the world to me. And I sort of appreciate you watching the video. And, everything. This is two books that uh, I find to be marvelous. This is Basic Butcher. It's just, it was the pictures of shooting and sticking that you seen. That was this and uh, it was a very helpful book and uh, I just find it to be a marvelous read to help anybody getting into this on their own, wanting to learn to do it. And then the next book is uh, the, about the greatest book I've ever bought. I have another one for beef and Lord willing we'll do a beef uh, later on in the fall and uh, you'll see it but this book right here is a marvelous book. It breaks down everything, and I appreciate your time, and I hope this helps everybody. Folks, I'd sure like to thank Jason for doing this here to help us all out. And also, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And hope you all have a blessed day. And be sure to tell your friends about us.